and good morning guys welcome back to another video hopping in the old Denali here today which has officially since I threw the jackhammer in the back there become a work truck so we've got a few things planned today one of which is well Wes got his truck back from blacking everything out and I'm really excited to be able to reveal that to you guys I actually haven't even seen it yet other than uh, in a picture that he sent me I haven't seen it in person so I'm excited to see what's going on with that then uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of uh, some work here on the old Denali We've got Josh coming over to fix some stuff over on Wes's truck. But first, we got to go check on a new project that we're starting, and uh, we've actually got a concrete pour going on right now. Oh, and I forgot, we're probably going to see Dave. And over to my right, your left, you'll see a trailer of brand new 2020 Fords about to be delivered. Look at them. Look at them beautiful Fords. It's majestically stacked on that trailer. Insert butthurt comments here. Now, you see, youngins, the Ford to Chevy rivalry has been around forever. Kind of in the same way that the Vikings hate the Packers. Kind of in the same way that the Raiders hate the Chargers. It is just the way it is. It's the way of the world. We all talk trash and we all get trash talked back to us. But the beautiful thing about this world is nobody gets butt hurt. And the first person that gets butt hurt and goes and tells the teacher that somebody else is talking trash ruins the whole game for everybody else. So feel free to talk trash, but make sure you can accept it as well. And everybody, go have fun. Lighten up a little bit, you know? Dave? Medium shirt, you know? <laughs> that's, that's all that is. Bobby, came myself, Bobby! Oh, Todo bien, Puppy? Todo bien. So, me and Dave just snapped this line on the wall over here, and Dave is thinking this line's level. Now we gotta get a level. <laughs> I shot it with the laser, which I trust way more than a level. It just looks crazy. So yeah, it, it doesn't look level at all. You think it's playing tricks on you that much that it's out of level? We got a ten dollar bet on it right now. Yeah, I think so. It gives me an opportunity to get some coffee and a level. Yo, Richie Rich! What's up, man? What's up, brother? Freaking arguing with me like we want right, to know, so we want to know if it's plus or minus. Dave I, like, wants to check the level. Is the line level or is so? In Rhino's amateur mind, he's like, mmm. Well, I'm a little bit of thin flow here, and in my genius veteran brain, I'm like, is it level or isn't it? Like, if we get right, bit by it, the angry the level. I don't care. All I care All about right. is that I get my ten dollars from you when I'm right. All right, Dave, pick your spot. Try, try this wall. All right, man. Let's I'm see. In, I mean, I'm I'm down with here. I think, All right, let's see. I think we're gonna we know, got. Uh, I think we're just gonna know. I think we're just gonna know. Just give Ryan his ten bucks right now. No, you, you can. Nope, that's more than three eighths. I gave you a three eighths tolerance. Oh, man, that's more than three eighths. That's more than three eighths. <laughs> yeah. Throw that down well, I'm not gonna high five <laughs> my my wood. No. Give me my ten bucks and high five me. I gave you ten I'll bucks. Take high five. <laughs> so I know in other parts of the world they actually have like real backyards, but we're over here in Dave's neighborhood, and essentially your backyard is just one giant steep hill. But this family has uh, actually made the best of it. So they've got a uh, deck coming off the house above us here, and then the yard's kind of tiered into a couple of other decks. There's a, a deck right here. They got a sweet trampoline over there, fire pit right here, and here's probably the coolest feature. And actually why we're doing what we're doing is they've got a, an awesome half pipe right here. So basically what we're doing on this project is the old way to get down in the yard, which was a super narrow stairwell. I mean, you can see, you know, Dave's pretty big of a guy, but uh, this is a very, very narrow staircase to get down. So we're taking out this old wall that used to be here, and we're gonna essentially build a new landing up here have a new staircase going down to that other new landing that we just put in today and then it'll essentially take you all the way down to the half pipe below. I gotta say having a half pipe in your backyard was like my dream growing up. This is super sick so these kids are super lucky. Um, this kid actually worked out a deal with the builder, um, I don't know, I think he's like 13, 14 to uh, make payments on this half pipe. So the kid's paying for the half pipe totally by himself which is super sick. Dave, I got an idea. I got an idea on how you can win your $10 back. Well, I was, you know, like, Nothing's off the table. See that half pipe down there? Uh-huh. You ever dropped in on a half pipe? I have. <laughs> <laughs> if you could drop in on that half pipe, I'll give you $10 back. Oh, dude. No. <laughs> no. Come on, it's not I like... Mean, now, now, I have... I did ride in the half pipe uh, the other day, but I did not drop in. That's a smart move, guys. When you actually you have to use your hands and your legs to make a living, you can't risk stuff like that. I, I respect your move. Dave, did you see this van across the street? I did. Dude. 
What's up, Dave? When are we gonna when are we gonna get one of these things? What year is this, Dave? You're you're an old band guy. What year is this? I don't know. It's got to be like 70s, right? 60s? 60s, 60s like, yeah. Like late 60s. Look at that! Look at that! Woo! Some some moose hair up there in the dash. This thing is sick. Look at the bucket seats out of like a go kart. Nice. Old Chevy. Ooh, Psycho Vegas 2016. If anybody's got one of these laying around your farm that runs and drives and is clean uh, and you want to donate it to my good buddy Dave, just uh, shoot me an email. We got to get him back in like a cool A-team type of van. Just even got a cocked in sunroof. Yeah, we got to get you one of these again, buddy. I, both my vans had two sunroofs. Whoa. The prior to this one. I know. This, Whoa. The, all right, unless you got two sunroofs, Dave don't want it. Yeah, well, first of all, that's not true. Second of all, like, there's don't go knocking the chocolate puppy van that, that we have now. I'm not, but come on. You're going to tell me you roll up to the club in this thing and you come out that door, you never open these doors. You always come out the side door. <laughs> all right, so the concrete is all laid down. Dave is on his way to get a couple of anchor bolts to epoxy into the wall there. And then next week, we will be back to build the staircase down to the super sweet half pipe. Right now, we're gonna head over to the warehouse, meet up with Josh, and uh, also give Wes's truck a big reveal. So for a while now, everybody has been saying, Rhino, you need to debadge the truck. And really, the only chrome left on the truck, aside from the window trim, which I'm not gonna paint or, well, I guess I would wrap this. I don't trust painting it because of uh, trying to get the paint up against this little rubber gasket that it has on it. I just feel like that's just asking for it to chip at some point. Whereas if it's final wrapped or even the black ones that came from the factory, which is like hit or miss on some trucks, I don't know why uh, my last truck, which was a Chevy, it was the LTZ Z71, had the black and some trucks have chrome, I don't know. For whatever reason, obviously I bought this truck uh, used back in 2016. The, the previous owner removed a couple random badges, like they removed the Duramax badge off the hood, and then they removed the GMC logo off the tailgate, but left all the other ones. So it never really made sense to me. And one thing is like, I always like the look of completely debadged trucks, but it's hard for me to commit to do it. I guess today's the day we're going to uh, debadge the old Denali here. Now I wouldn't be doing this without our good buddy Josh coming and uh, you'll see why when he gets here. So if you've never debadged a truck, it's a pretty simple process. Get yourself a little bit of fishing line. This here is 80 pound test. Actually, I have no clue what this is. Um, and make sure you clean the area before you do anything because you don't want to be rubbing the dirt into it. Let me see if I can get this untangled here for a second. Now heat is your friend, but you don't want too much heat. A lot of people say run a heat gun on it. That's very risky. I had a uh, neighbor, we actually debadged his uh, 2014 Silverado ran a heat gun on the actual Chevy emblem on the back and it pulled off a little bit of the paint because it heated it up. So I don't like to use heat on new vehicles because it's just too risky to overheat it. Uh, but let your truck sit out in the sun for a little while and you'll be better off. And then all you're gonna do is uh, wrap some fishing line around your fingers, slide it up behind the letter there and you're just gonna saw back and forth and you're basically cutting the actual letter itself off of the adhesive. And if the finger paint is just too much for you, you can, uh, you know, just wrap around a couple pencils or something like that. And that'll make it uh, easier on you. And now everybody told me I need to uh, color match these to the copper on the truck. A lot of people were saying powder coat them. Well, they're actually plastic, they're not metal, so you can't really powder coat them. But also on color matching them with the copper, I worry it would look too much like the the late 90s when everybody was putting gold emblems on vehicles and it would not be a good look on this truck. So once you get all the lettering off, then you obviously are left with the adhesive from uh, the backs of the letters. So I like to come in and just pull it off by hand and it's pretty simple once you get it started. And yes, I have the 3M eraser wheel sitting over there, but something about putting that on brand new paint also worries me. Well, so I just got an update from Josh. Apparently he's not gonna make it today because well, I know I've said it many times on this channel, but California drivers are not good. And as you can see from these pictures, a uh, lady decided to pull out right in front of him from a parking lot. And well, she didn't really win. But nonetheless, Wes is still on his way over. I've given Nick a call. Nick's gonna come over and uh, take care of some of this for me. Looks like we've got old Genesis detailing over here. Let's see if he's uh, sleeping inside of his truck. And not even in his truck. Huh. Guess he went for a walk somewhere. You guys look like I found Nick. He's right there. Hey. 
Hey, hey buddy. Nick in his uh, traditional manner over here getting Uber Eats. All right, Nick, I, uh, you got your work cut out for you here, buddy. What do you think? Easy? Easy You actually did a good job. Right. You didn't ruin any paint. Yeah, that was my biggest thing. I didn't run the eraser wheel on it because I, I don't trust it on new paint. I wouldn't do that either. Okay. I just use Goo Gone, microfiber towel, and buff it off. That doesn't hurt the paint? Good, because I already used some right there. <laughs> I just did it in a little spot because I'm pretty sure I did that on my last truck on uh, the Thermax badges on the hood, but I was worried that I was going to ruin the paint. I'm telling you guys, he's millennials, so he just got his one Jersey Mike's sandwich order. Then all of a sudden he gets an alert on his phone and he's like, oh, that's my other order. I'm like, what are you, you got another Uber Eats order? He's like, oh yeah, I got a milkshake coming. I'm like, what? It recommended Sonic and I've never been to Sonic. Uh, if it was recommended, then it totally makes sense. Dang, bro. Yeah. You happy camper now? I am. You've been spilling too. Wow. So Nick got the rest of the residue off of this side. I mean, obviously there's still a little bit of crumbs on there, but he is now setting up his little, little, the, the Rupus. Rupes. The Rupes polisher. And one of the important steps when you're debadging something, white, I don't think it's that big a deal, but if you look at like Wes's truck, where he debadged on a black truck, you're probably gonna see the scratches more, right? You really wanna make sure, I mean, keep in mind, the rest of your paint has seen sun the entire life of its vehicle, whereas the part underneath the badging hasn't seen any pretty much since the day that it left the factory. And on top of that, you're gonna have dirt um, that's gonna like sit right on the edge of all the lettering. And every time you wipe it by, it's kind of starting to create a little bit of a, a valley right there. So it's important to kind of go through with a polisher and uh, blend all that paint kind of back together and make it look like there was never anything on there. So many secrets. I'm revealing all the secrets right now. What is this? this is a, I can literally show you what to do with what products to what do. What is this? Is this a paint measuring thing? No, it's a swirl finding pen. This is a swirl finding pen. Yeah. That's a thing. Turn it on. I don't know how. I don't want to break it. It looks expensive. Is it expensive? No, it's on Amazon for like 50 bucks. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it is a Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't know it does that. That's a, this is a flashlight, dude. It's just a flashlight. Ryan. What? Holy swirls. Oh, yeah, but you can't see him without your flashlight. Your sweet swirl finding pen. Yeah. I think I'm having so much fun, buddy. Are you sure you don't want in on this? <laughs> I'll take the N. You take the, the E. It's a lot of fun. I'm gonna work it in first, you know? Do you have to whisper sweet nothings to it? Do you what? tell it it's beautiful? Or what? Do you call it a bad girl? Yeah. All right. Oh, what's up, buddy? Are you ready to reveal your truck? I don't know, it's dirty. So if you guys remember from past videos, Wes has been going back and forth on whether or not to black out his entire truck. And to me, I'm a big fan of when people do that. I think the trucks look awesome. Now, the one thing about Wes's truck, and I think all of you guys agreed, is it looks good with the chrome on it. Like, nobody was contesting that, but Wes bought some sweet black wheels for it, and he's like, well, you know what, at this point, I might as well black everything out. So, Wes, would you like to uh, tell us here, buddy? What did we do? So, got the black wheels already had the lift and everything pretty much powder coated black because that's how they most of the lift come uh, from the factory or whatever so I went ahead and vinyl wrapped the headlights the grill uh, left the emblem chrome and this little piece here so I, I have that little bit of uh, chrome if I do decide to go back to polish um, did the mirror caps the uh, the window sill trim window sill trim got wrapped as well I ordered OEM handles, gloss black, and then swapped out the chrome badges for black high country badges. So if you guys remember on my truck, I had my door handles actually painted um, by a body shop, whereas Wes actually went, what'd you say, eBay? Yeah, so Brian Miller from uh, Bulletproof, he's got a similar truck like mine, obviously Bulletproof lift and lifted a little higher, but he, he sent me a link to a eBay store that sells GM OEM uh, door handles in pretty much any paint code that you have and gloss blacks gloss black pretty much so ordered these for about 110 bucks shipped so i gotta say i i'm pretty sure i spent more than that to have mine pulled off 
painted. I don't know that they were necessarily prepped correctly, so that's why I got like a giant rock chip out of mine. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up buying the exact same ones that Wes bought and uh, put them on my truck because you know, anytime you gotta try and scuff up that plastic chrome, it's it's hard if they don't prep it right because the paint just doesn't want to. And I upgraded to the uh, Fox 2.0 Resi uh, coilovers. Uh, I think actually 2.5. How's that compared to the shocks you had before? Uh, it's night and day for sure. Um, there's a lot of adjustability on them. Well, I gotta say the truck looks absolutely mean. You guys saw it in that footage there going down the road. It looks cool. I think to me, like an all blacked out truck, there's just something more aggressive about them. Great job, Wes. Thank you. What One you last got? thing. One last thing. I added C4's uh, rock lights to the wheel wells and then under the uh, front and rear bumpers to shine on the lift kit and then the rear axle. So we'll have to show you guys that in another video because obviously it is, uh, it's daytime right now. Show them your install, Wes. Just oh, they're on. Oh, okay. Two, two per wheel well. There you go. So he's running the same rock lights that I am. So after all that talk of not using the 3M eraser wheel, um, the truck's been sitting in the warehouse now for about three hours. It's cold and dude, I'm just over fighting it. So eraser wheel it is. One thing is though, we're going super, super light with it. I'm not trying to get everything off. We'll get that off with the buffing pad when Nick comes through, but we're just taking it real light, real slow. Trying not to heat up the paint. Giant, I ain't gon' fire on Catch a fade, you I'm wrong, I'm gone Y'all can catch the wave that I am on I am icon, y'all are wide wrong Think that I'm a reconciled boy So ain't nothing to it though This is all me, ain't got much to do with who you know Well she is all done, completely debadged All the marks of where the old badging was Has been polished out by Nick Even the tailgate was all done And to top it off, he got rid of the soot mark over here on the bumper I don't know what happened guys, my exhaust fell off one day and uh, all of a sudden, like, there's just soot that comes out. But it actually is really hard to uh, wipe off the bumper, even when I wash the truck for some reason. It just does not like to come off. So uh, Nick went and got that off. But I got to say, the truck definitely has a much, much cleaner look to it now. Look at this, guys. Nick over here put methods on his detailing trailer. Looks good, buddy. It looks Dude, good. He completed the trailer now. <laughs> right? Well, now we got to put some on the Ford. No, no, no. Well, the trailer looks cooler than the truck wheels. Yeah, because like now, like if I get a new truck, that's so cool. Like the trailer will always be cooler. So one other thing we got going on today is we actually got my factory steps off the old BBB there sold. So we're going to go meet up with the guy right now and uh, do a little exchange. We've got our new parts truck loaded up here. Will. Will. Nice, nice to meet you, brother. You. We got a 2019. Yeah, 2019. Ooh, let's go check it out. Yeah. We go see what I'm missing by driving a 2016. <laughs> How long have you had it? Uh, two months. Nice. How many miles you got on her? 2020. Ooh, all right, all right. <laughs> Sweet looking L5P. Yeah, How do you it's like really it? Dirty right now. How do you like the L5P? Uh, I really like it. Um, I don't have any complaints about it. Just. Where'd you come from? What'd you buy? What'd you have before this? I had a 1500. Gotcha. 2015, uh, 1500. So. So it's a whole new ball game when you step up to diesel, huh? Oh yeah. I mean, when when I was uh, overseas, I did a whole bunch of research on diesels. You know, I started watching all the YouTube videos. Nice. And I was like, you know what? I like I love the way that the front end looks. So I'm just like, you know what? I want to get the 2019 because the 20s are. Yeah. I don't know. That front end is just. I think we're all in the same boat. On, at least the Chevy. <laughs> I like the GMC front end a lot better than I do yeah. the Chevy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Chevy one, it's. I don't know. Give it like a year and we'll probably all like it though. Probably. Yeah. This is a uh, ground shaker, the company. I stuck a LC2I down here and nice. along with my amp tucked up against the, the back, back wall. wall. Pull it out. I got two eight inch kickers. Oh, nice. Yeah. These things hit hard and yeah. everything is set down. Well, you got a lot of air in the box too. This is a big box. Oh yeah. The air just shooting all the way to the front of the to the driver's side. Nice. Yeah. Who installed it? I did myself. Oh, you hooked up the LC2? Yeah, it's pretty easy. So today is a very uh, step-filled day. Wes is over here bolting on his new steps that he just picked up. So Wes actually picked these up from, well, our buddy, friend of the channel, Sean at SR Designs. And these are the Best Stop, B-Stop. I don't know how you pronounce it. They're not the AMP Research Steps. They're almost identical. I thought they were sister companies, but apparently they're not to where AMP has a patent on, if you guys know my steps, the way they work is you just 
plug them into the OBD2 port, and then anytime you open a door, obviously the truck on the computer knows. Uh, when Amp Steps first came out was, you actually had to like hardwire it to each door to let it know that the door is open and the step will come down. But nowadays, it's super simple. Uh, it's just plugged into the OBD2 port. I have a splitter on here right now to run my edge monitor. But the steps that Wes has from B-stop, best stop, I don't know. Um, apparently, Amp has a patent on the OBD2 port setup. So these run on like a, was it a magnet sensor or a Wi-Fi sensor? It's a Wi-Fi sensor with a magnet. So like. So you have to man actually put it on each door. Right. Do you have the sensors? Oh, these are the sensors? Hold on, don't, don't move. So each one of the doors gets one of these mounted on them. And the magnet? Yeah, the sensor and the magnet. Oh, well, dude, you, look at that. You got, you got the lights on. That's half the battle, Wes. Good job, buddy. All right, guys. Well, with that, we're going to wrap up another day. Uh, it's nice and quiet here in the shop. I've got to run now. I've got one thing I'm working on right now. I think it's going to be my secret weapon for these car shows to beat Carlos. And uh, I can't tell you guys exactly what it is right now. I'm heading over to uh, have it made. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforwardapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.